thank you for joining. Remember to hit that thumbs up button below. Your support really makes a difference. It helps us reach more people. You can also benefit from the messages shared. We hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to Real Relationship Talk, the podcast hosted by yours truly, Teresha Young, Relationship Master Coach, where we have open, non-judgmental, heart-to-heart conversations about love, self-love, self-care, dating and relationships. And for this week's episode, I am going to have a wonderful conversation with Yorande Rolf. How are you doing, Yorande? Fine, thank you. Lovely to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. It's an honour and privilege because we're going to talk all things rest and sleep today, which I am so looking forward to. But before we crack on into that conversation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let everybody know a bit more about who you are and what you do. So, Yorande founded her award-winning well-being company, Natural Fragrance Company Limited, in June 2013. She designs, creates, formulates, and markets her own range of relaxing and uplifting natural products and services, as well as inspiring thousands of professionals to enhance their wellness naturally. Yorande also runs sleep solution clinics. Over these ten years, her business has grown from strength to strength gathering huge numbers of testimonials and many repeat customers from wide-ranging clients, including accountants, charities, entrepreneurs, osteopaths, pub owners, therapists, and yoga teachers. Wow, I love that mix of professionals that you are working with. How amazing is that? So that was just a short caption of who you are and what you do. And I would love for you to share with us a little bit more about what led you to doing what you do, some of the key highlights of that? Um, well, the first big thing that happened was when I had my um, second son, because he was very sensitive and he had cradle cap, he had wow. eczema and skin uh, conditions. Mm. And I wasn't able to help him uh, with what the doctor gave him because it just sat on his skin. So um, I was able to kind of do lots of research and then remember back back to what my grandma used to use like shea butter and if Mm. I used um, things like pure uh, vegetable oils um, on his skin like sunflower oil sweet almond oil um, those kind of oils they were the ones that kind of nourished his skin rather than sitting on his skin and it didn't make him scratch it didn't make him sneeze so I started on my that's one of the things that propelled me on this journey of finding things that help people um, with their skin and I also found that if I helped him rest and relax he was much calmer because things like that can be quite anxious when you your skin flares up and you've got red skin and dry skin and flaky skin and it's you know really uncomfortable it can be quite anxious so I'd help try to help him relax and rest and sleep so kind of that's kind of propelled my journey to finding out more and then more people asking me about how to look after their skin properly and naturally. So I was able to kind of start telling them. And then I was making products to help him as well, kind of mixing moisturizers and things. And then kind of grew from there. Amazing, amazing journey. And it all started from nurturing your son. I'm curious though, because you've spoken about how obviously this, the, the ingredients, the products that you put together was quite calming and relaxing for him. Is there a way that you apply it into the skin too that can actually help soothe and relax people? Definitely, definitely. Because quite often when we knock something, knock our hand, we'll put our hand on it to kind of soothe it. And it's kind of instinctive. Touch is instinctive, you know. Ah. Uh, So that's one of the things that we kind of um, try to emulate, um, you know, with mother and child touch, mother and touch, massage, comfort, you know, because we stroke our children, we comfort them and we pat them. So those are, th- those are the kind of things that kind of can be um, translated into hand massage, foot massage, body massage. Yeah, I can understand that. I recall when my daughter was a baby and I was doing some baby massage for her around her tummy. And they used to say to do it in a certain direction and spell the word L-O-V-E, like love. I love, love you. Me. I love you. And it was so well, soothing for me too, but Lovely. I'm assuming for her 
So that's why I ask as well, because when it comes to human touch, like what you said, it's instinctive. And also it's just that energy of not only are you just applying the lotion or the ingredients to you, it's the self-care and the loving energy Definitely. that you put behind it. Because quite often we can rush those things, can't we, as humans? Yeah. You get out the bath, you put on lotion really, really quick, and you just go about business. But when yeah. we can take that time to also have a self-loving practice yeah. where you really feel into the senses, I can only imagine that that enhances the ability to be restful and to also sleep. Definitely, now, definitely. So talking about sleep, and I thank you for sharing that part of your story. What role do you believe sleep plays in our overall well-being and in your experiences what is some of the common challenges that people face when it comes to achieving good quality rest and also sleep lovely so the first thing you ask is about how important sleep is because yeah. sleep is so important it's one of the key uh, things of wellness and well-being so um, we have nutrition which is really important we eat the right things we drink enough to hydrate us and we move and we also have nourishing relationships yeah. and yeah sleep is really important it's up there because we it helps us to actually you know um have a downtime recharge our battery so to speak and also when we sleep our body goes to work to eliminate toxins mm -hmm. and cons cons consolidate our memories Yes. So sleep is really important. So I want people to prioritize sleep um, yeah. as they do hopefully exercise and movement and spending quality time with their loved ones. Mm. So if we want people to prioritize sleep, what are some of the, the obstacles and challenges that people Definitely. face? There's always say, a challenge, well, isn't it? There's always a challenge as to why yeah. I'm not able to get enough sleep. There's some exactly. reason, some justification. So exactly. what are some of the, the common challenges that you hear? <laughs> Phones is a big one. You know, okay. a lot of us take our phones to sleep and we spend yeah. a lot of time on our phones. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have time pressures because, you know, there's only 24 hours in a day and a lot of us are juggling uh, motherhood, careers, uh, lots of other things as well, like when we're caring for, for family members. So there are time pressures, there's technology pressures. There's also social pressures because mm -hmm. you feel that you're missing out if you don't go on, you know, all the social media as well. And, and also sometimes there's uh, health pressures as well, because sometimes mm. we can't sleep because we have some sort of health uh, challenge that yeah. we're dealing with. So sleep um, is important, but there are obstacles and challenges that we don't get enough sleep and we don't get enough quality sleep, some of us. Yeah. So I completely hear that. Enough sleep and quality sleep. Now, I have to say that I am probably, I sleep, I do. I'm a bit of a night owl. I, I do go to sleep late and I wake up early because I get my daughter ready for school. So, and I start the day, I own my business, so I start the day there. So I'm not the, the best person when it comes to sleep and so forth. For you know, some of the reasons that you state there, um, I guess is the technology side of it. I have an online business. So much of what I do is online, catching up on things, navigating my business online. So whilst I might not have the quantity or quality of sleep is there anything with all those people who are facing those challenges that they can do during a day that might not necessarily be sleep but maybe give them the rest that they require in order to compensate for a lack of sleep yes um so i i would re recommend people to sleep seven to eight hours a day okay um and it's difficult to quantify but but um i think if people say oh this is my rest relaxation and sleep time say between i don't know 11 and 6 so you, someone goes to bed at 11 and then they wake up at 6 so that's 7 hours in bed so at least you know that you're in bed for 7 hours okay. that's the really good thing to do and if if you can't sleep you put your effort into relaxing uh -huh. so there's different types of relaxation so what i get people to do and practice is belly breathing so so they're breathing from their diaphragm and their bellies go up and down and you people usually do that when they're kind of it's a beautiful day you've gone to mm. you know on holiday and you're just relaxing you that you want to simulate that kind of breathing when you're sleeping and your body will kick in and hopefully 
breathe for you once you're sleeping. So it's just before you sleep, practicing belly breathing and also practicing relaxation while in bed. Um, because relaxation, again, quite com often comes to children and other people. And sometimes we're very tense. Mm -hmm. And um, we can what we can do is we can tense our bodies and then relax. And then yeah. lean into that relaxation um, more and more. So we, we have our own physical relaxation. Those two things will really help with relaxation, recharging. And mm -hmm. also, if you learn to relax, what a lot of us, we're really tired and we fall asleep, bump, bang. And then yeah. we wake up in the middle of the night because something jogs us. And then we find it difficult to go back to sleep. So if mm -hmm. we can practice those two things, physical relaxation and deep breathing, we should be able to have better quality sleep. And also when we do wake up, we shouldn't be so tired and feel haggard. We should have hopefully um, helped our body relax and rest so that mm -hmm. our, our mind and our, and our um, you know, brains can do what they're there for, just detox, consolidate our memories and do kind of healing and repair. Because that's one of the, so those are the kind of things we do when we're sleeping. There's a lot to think about, but I think if we start small, something small, like this is my rest time, because we recharge our batteries, we take our cars for, you know, maintenance. We, there's a lot of things that we do. We we do our boilers every year, or we should do, maintain. So we you think of, of it as maintaining your, you know, rest. So you say, this is my rest time at night, and I'm going to try and stick to it. Obviously, there's different times when we can't do it, but this is what I want to, I am aiming for. Yeah. This is a process. And also during the day, we, we can close our eyes for 10 minutes um, when we're tired, mm -hmm. or we can, um, you know, do things that energize us. Because some of us are on the computer a lot. We can get up every half an hour, look at the sun, hopefully, um, you know, get a nice drink, do some stretching, so the, do things that energize us during the day, hopefully, and, and get also rest. I'm a big believer of naps as well. So the nap, if someone has a nap, they should have a nap for 10 to 20 minutes or an hour to an hour and a half. Because mm -hmm. if you you can have this first short sleep cycle or a yeah. full cycle of sleep. Yeah. It sounds okay. a lot during the day, but if we're really, really tired, I would say uh, forget everything and just have an hour of um, in, and you can set your alarm, have an hour of rest mm. or an hour, an hour and a half yeah. to really treat yourself. So that involves us being very intentional. I love yes. everything that you said there. It's been very intentional. So, for example, let's look at the night aspect of what you said there. Yes. So the belly breathing and then also just learning how to relax as well. Yes, it's the so, fastest way of relaxing. is tensing all the body and then relaxing it as then, much as you can. Exactly, feel. and then doing that exercise. So that means being super intentional about getting off your mobile device or whatever you want, yes. and then giving yourself that time before sleep. So that's intentionality there. Yes. Absolutely love that. Also, again, the naps during the day. So I guess if you can have that 10 to 20 minute nap, you can see if you can be intentional about having that in your lunch break. So then yes. that means intentionally having a lunch break. Because I know many people yes. will find reasons. And there are many reasons why people work through their lunch. However, school of thought is take your lunch break. It's is there, it's given to you for a reason, you know, yes. if you can to do that. So it's all about being intentional. Now, I love what you were saying when you compared it to maintaining our cars, for example, maintaining our boilers at home, whatever it is. We maintain those things because we know there's a consequence yes. if we don't do it. Yes. So for well, people are like, yeah, 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 I can, I could get that quality sleep. I could have a nap. What's the consequences of not having good sleep? Because I'm sure there's a, a list of things that we probably can't explore all today. But you know, what are some of the key consequences of not having good quality sleep? So I'm sure that's going to be imp implications on our health, maybe yes. our mindset. So, yeah, would yeah. you be able to share? Yes. So um, they found, they've done studies and they, they know that if people have five hours sleep or less, they're much more likely to have depression, anxiety. And also, if people have less sleep, it doubles their risk of death. It doubles the, it's, there's so many risks in not having enough sleep. People don't heal as much as they could. People's mental health goes. They don't have joy. There's, they're more kind of harassed and ah, 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 it's kind of uh, I can't stand it uh, they're more more likely to 
I'm sorry to do this. They're really bad consequences. If it carries on and on and on, people don't sleep, they don't rest. There's um the the there's much more high risk of suicide. Sorry to bring it up. It's very, very sad. Very real. We have to be real. We have to be real and that, that may Uh, yeah, trigger some sorry people. about that. To be real. Um, it, it it's a it's a consequence. It's Yes, a consequence. there are consequences of us not looking after ourselves. I mean, if we don't brush our teeth, or if we don't, you know, eat properly, or if we if we don't drink enough water, there's all there are consequences, and it could take time. It could take you know up to ten years to come to come up or more, or it, you know, it's a risk. Um, it may not happen, but it's a it's a higher risk um, of that of that happening if we don't look after ourselves. If we don't nourish, I mean, if you have a plant and you don't water it, you know, it, it might live because it might get water from the air. But, you know, it's, it's like we're watering ourselves, we're looking after ourselves, we're, we're investing in, in our bodies functioning to the best it can. Yeah. And I'm sure many people are hearing those consequences. And when you were talking about like the gradual, it could take some time, you know, for these things or for these symptoms to develop. Equally, maybe it's good for us to gradually do things. So, for example, for people who aren't used to you know, having seven hours sleep, for example, it might be a case of, okay, can you get to bed 10 minutes earlier? Yeah. 15 minutes earlier so it doesn't feel like yeah. I've gone from zero to 100 exactly it's a, a gradual process to say can I get into bed at least 10 minutes earlier and then yeah relax so easing into the process would you say yeah I think so and I think one of the things that um might be good is if someone if they can spend a minute before going to bed practicing bre deep breathing and also a lot of the time we do things that perhaps could wait till the next day you know so is it possible for us to um you know say I don't have to do this today I can do it tomorrow or next week I don't have to um you know I can do some batch cooking and freeze it and then bring it out the day before or I can say to my friend you know can I see you can we have a phone call instead of seeing each other or can I say to, to do I have to have five minutes can I have four minutes can I have sorry so I have five meetings can I have four meetings so you know it's an ongoing process you're right but you know we can evaluate what's really important to us and do that and I'll do other things later so a lot sometimes it's to do with time management as well you know so you know do I have to sit on the phone for half an hour can I do it for 15 minutes and use that 15 minutes to go to bed slightly earlier can I stay in bed I mean, they did another study. They said if people stay in bed for 16 minutes longer in the morning, it increases their productivity. So can I stay in bed and rest even if I don't sleep? Just do deep breathing. And I know we have to work with our minds to say, you know, so I used to think sleep was a waste of time, but obviously it's not. But, you know, if people think like that, is it possible for them to be educated to say that, no, it's not a waste of time? Um, you know, having your five a day of vegetables and drinking enough water and exercising isn't a waste of time. It's something that we can maybe hopefully gradually work into our system and feel better for it. Um, one of the people I worked with, he said to me, oh, um, I met him in a networking group where people just share experiences. And he said, I'm exhausted at four o'clock in the afternoon because in the middle of the night, I um, wake up. two o'clock in the morning I bring my laptop out and I fall awake and I want to do some work Mm. then I fall asleep because I'm so tired I wake up my normal time and then I'm exhausted at four when my children come in I can't I, I just want to fall asleep so I said to him do the things I suggested don't take bring your laptop out do some deep breathing and do some resting and then after when he did those things he said oh, I'm really happy I've got energy to be with my children when they come back from school and I can actually play with them and talk to them and interact with them rather than fall asleep. So that was a big, big, big win for him because, you know, those are the consequences. The children are going to grow up and leave home and he would be falling asleep instead of spending quality, quality time with them. So those are the consequences, if we can do that, that we can enjoy spending quality time with our loved ones. Yeah, that was a huge win. And thank you for that share. Because when we absolutely connect with our motivation, our drive and our why for doing it, it can help us to make better 
decisions, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So everything you're saying there about the time management, reviewing your lifestyle, natural fact, to see where you can make tweaks in order to incorporate more sleep and what that sleep looks like for each individual person. So I wanted to explore this bit about your sleep clinics as well and your sleep solutions, because it sounds like that piece of guidance that you gave to the guy was really helpful for him. And of course, he's communicated back to you to say how transformative that has been for his relationship with his children. How powerful yeah, is that? Powerful, how beautiful yeah. is that? So when it comes to your, your sleep solutions and your clinics, can you share a bit more about what that looks like for people who attend? So um, ed- education, I think, is key because I want to educate people, as you said, to make the right choices mm. and to feel benefits from it. So I want people to think about setting up a, a success success cy- uh, sunny cycle mm. so that you sleep earlier, you feel better for it during the day and you see the benefits and you're motivated to carry on making those changes. And then you think, oh, yes, I, you know, I feel more alert. I feel more kind of, uh, you know, awake. I feel more focused. Um, and my coughs get better quickly. So we we're noticing the good things that are happening by us re- taking deliberate steps to set up the best environment for our rest, sleep and relaxation. And sometimes we worry if we can't sleep, you know. There's t- times we wake up in the middle of the night and think, oh, no, I'm wide awake, I can't sleep. Yeah. So, you know, if we kind of put in effort into resting and relaxing, it, sleep will be more likely to to come in and even if we can't sleep which sometimes you can't for different reasons you've rested you've you've done your best to rest and you find that you're not as tired during the day you can do you know possibly 80 percent of what you you know and then the next night hopefully you're more likely to sleep because you've rested and you think and your body think because I'm I'm resting oh I can sleep or, you know, because it's sleep is one of those things that's in a way it's out of our control, but rest is something we can do. So if I'm finding that for myself, especially if I'm resting more, I just fall asleep just like that. Mm-hmm. There's something about it that makes it. And then I think, oh, yes, I didn't even think about it. I fell asleep. Maybe that kind of resting helped me to train my brain to think, oh, yes, I'm rested. I've been put in a better position to to sleep. Yeah. And when you're talking about you know, incorporating those little rest moments, it's that's so important to be able to do that. So as part of your, because what you're sharing is this is what has worked for you as well and yeah. what works for other people that you're, the professionals that you deal with. So during your sleep solution clinics, do you specifically work with people to tailor that for each person? Yes, yes, you do? yes. Okay. So a lot of it is we talk about, you know, what we, our goals, you know, what we want to see, our vision for ourselves. Okay. So a lot of people think uh, my goal is is because I they want to see the benefits of being able to sleep, mm. or you know they see they they you know my goal and my vision for myself. I can't really sleep as well as I'm sleep, not sleeping as well as I want to. I mm. want to be able to sleep better. What can I do? What the, are the steps I can take to bring that in? So it could be. Um, affirmations affirmations are quite powerful so things you tell yourself because some of us tell ourselves that oh I can't sleep I'm too tired Mm. but you change that to sleep to say that I'm tired and I'm doing what I can what's in my power to usher in sleep other affirmations could be you know I set up myself up for the best sleep I can Um, I see benefits of sleep so I'm doing what I can to sleep so affirmations are things you say in the present to yourself in your mind to change your perception of what might have happened before to step into something new for yourself Mm. so that you can see the benefits so you can be more productive so you can be more um you know energized during the day so you can be you know do the things you want to do faster but also do create time to do other things and have the energy to do so so some people may think oh i would like to you know go out for a walk but I'm too tired to so hopefully you have a good sleep and then you'll be able to have enough energy to go to that walk and enjoy it and notice all the beautiful things in nature so it's for us it's kind of enhancing our lives and our well-being by sleeping and relaxing and resting because it's a way of us uh, it's by it's provided by nature for us to kind of you know repair ourselves detox um 
you know, uh, do things in our bodies that if you don't sleep, you lack. Yeah, yeah. I love the identity work that you're doing it because when you, uh, when we are practicing affirmations, you know, what words we use really affirm what we believe about ourselves, what we think, what we feel. So to be able to utilize the, the mindset work along with the actual aspect of sleep is a powerful combination there. And then also when you were speaking about noticing the beautiful things in nature, that's putting you into a state of appreciation and gratitude and groundedness, I would say. So again, this might be new to people because it, it's really a holistic piece of work when it comes to sleep. It's not just, okay, I will set my alarm, I'll have a 20 minute nap and set my alarm. There's actually some more legwork to be done around you know, who you are being when you are wanting more sleep, if the goal is more sleep, or when you are getting more sleep, now who are you as a person? That's really deep work that you do there. Yeah, because when you sleep, you bring your whole life into sleep. You know, it's, you're dealing with um, one of the people I talked to. He said that when he was sleep, um, small, his parents would punish him by saying, go to bed. Oh, so yeah. he saw sleep as punishment. And it, now he's grown. He has that association. Mm. So it's like your dissociation, dissociating yourself from those things that your parents used to do. And you're becoming a person who is changed and values sleep and sees the you know, the importance of sleep. And sleep is not a punishment. Yeah. Sleep is a, a way of your body, you know, actually doing something positive. So mm -hmm. some people, you know, instead of dreading sleep, you look forward to sleep and yeah. you bring all the good things into sleep. So you may bring music into sleep that you enjoy. You may bring words into sleep that you enjoy. So maybe people will listen to things while they're sleeping. Um, you make your sleep environment as comfortable as possible, obviously within your budget, you make sure that, you know, you, you've done everything you need to do. And one of the books I read um, by Colin Epps, he says um, it, he advises people to spend two hours getting ready for sleep mm -hmm. because, you know, you make your bed, you make sure that you um, set, set your alarms, you make sure you maybe get stuff ready in the morning. You, you know, there's, there's a whole process <laughs> so that you're ready to sleep. Because some people, they think, oh, I'm exhausted and then sleep. And think, oh, no, I've got to do this, this, this. But you spend those times, if there's things you want to do, you make a list of maybe doing them in the morning. So it's the first, first thing you do. You um, Some people, I know a lady, she gets hungry in the middle of the night. She's got some nuts right next to her bed and she grabs them and eats them. Which, I, you know, it's, it works for her. Yeah. Or some people put a note and pad next to their beds and they yeah. quickly write down something or they, you know, they, they, and some people, if they're really hot, menopause, they put some, a cool pad next to their bed and they put it on themselves quickly. So you're getting ready to kind of help you to go. If you wake up, you go back to sleep. And if you want to have a break in the middle of the, in the, the sleep, you maybe go to the loo and then come back and then you go to sleep. So it's like you minimize the breaks in between. And I always say that if people shouldn't drink or eat two hours before they mm. go to sleep either, because that minimizes you know um comfort breaks so you're concentrating on getting the best quality sleep you can um you know and you're looking after yourself and you see the benefits you know people um tell you oh you look because there was one one guy I, I advised him and he also sprayed lavender spray next to his um pillow before going to bed and he looked like a total person the next day it's like black and white and or, or sun and day. The way he looked was completely different. I almost didn't recognize him. And he said it was because I had a good good sleep last <laughs> night. <laughs> and it sounds so simple. I just slept really well. And suddenly I'm radiating, I'm glowing, and people are noticing. And what you're sharing there is really powerful because having a sleep ritual or a practice to actually set things up can shift that mindset from something that might feel like a a burden, maybe even a punishment or whatever we have experienced is something that's really loving, something that's really nurturing, something to take care of. I can completely see the value in doing that and making it a very sensory aspect. Like you said, the lavender that come through, maybe the candles that you can see the lights, some music, as you said there, to really make it quite seductive. You know, you can make yeah. sleep quite seductive and yeah. really nurturing, you? I like that. <laughs> Make a note. Sleep. Yeah, seductive sleep. I write that down. 
Yeah. <laughs> Because that's quite enticing. It's, it can feel quite exciting, actually, to get that sleep, especially for all of the consequences that we've spoken about and all of the benefits that can come from it, too, that we've covered in the show, too. So sleep rituals, I would say, if you haven't got one of those, start with that. Start to enjoy the concept of having that good sleep. I'm also very curious because we've spoken a bit about how even, I think you said about the 16 minutes extra, can make us more productive um, during the day. Now, you work with professionals, uh, and for all of the professionals that we listed, and I'm sure there's more professionals that you work with too. So are there more, do you get any more feedback from people? Because you've got some great testimonials that you said from these professionals who say, natural fact, my productivity has increased so much as well from your first-hand experience. Yeah, because, you know, if you haven't slept well um, the night before, you, you roll in and you think, oh, no, this is dreadful. And it's kind of like a dreadful feeling and you're more sluggish. And um, instead of starting work at nine o'clock sharp, you maybe keep getting coffee and mm. you do things slower and you find that, you know, the coffee doesn't kick in for an hour and a half. And so you spend you spend an hour and a half just being sluggish and just being dreading things and doing slowly. But if you sleep well, you know, at nine o'clock, you think, oh, I'm awake. I can do this. I can do that. I've got a list of things I can do. You know, did, 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 you've done it. And it's like more kind of mm. you know, in the flow rather than kind of being sluggish or oh, I didn't sleep well, I'm yawning and things like that. So, yes, um, people are generally at least 25 percent more productive mm -hmm. by sleeping better and resting and relaxing. So, you're, again, you're definitely shifting your mindset to think, you know, I was really excited last night. My son came round. Um, I had a wonderful time with him. He went back to his digs um, and I kept thinking about him. I couldn't sleep because I was excited. You have that as well. But I rested and now I feel OK in the morning. I can just get on and do all the things I need to do. Mm, yeah, I, I love I love the the outcomes, the other outcomes that can come from the power of sleep as well. Not only in your business and in your career, but also on the quality of your overall life and your relationships with people and the joy. You know, joy is one of the, the highest vibrations, love and joy that we can have you know, in this world and within ourselves, it radiates and people see it. They can actually see you glowing when you are radiating it. So I, I love that holistic approach. And because of the eclectic people that you work with, have you noticed that there are some cultural um, influence maybe that affects sleep pattern? Because I know sometimes when it comes to different cultures or maybe lifestyles, and I'm a black woman myself. I can see that, you know, you're a black woman. If that's how you identify too. And sometimes in our culture, we might not necessarily get the amount of sleep because we are doing a lot of the, the heavy work and so forth. And do you notice any of those patterns at all with people that you work um, with? I think um, it's the, I'm not one of the burden, but I think one of the things that come with being a woman is kind of having children um, and Quite often you're looking after maybe an elderly um, relative so it's it's like you know but quite often you're expected to do that and the, the men are not expected to do that so yeah. that's one of the things I'm noticing as a woman you are more likely to look after children and elderly people yeah, okay. or people who have other other special needs yes so that that's more of a, um something that it's like a responsibility and you've got that extra responsibility, which I call the burden, which isn't a burden isn't always a bad thing, but it, you know what I mean? It's more of that to look after. So mm. it's a way of prioritizing. So you need, we as um, caregivers are prioritizing other people quite often yeah. rather than ourselves which in some ways is very good. You know, we're sac sac sacrificing our time, our effort, our focus to look mm. after people, which is highly commendable. And sometimes we are, we're last. So um, it's kind of quite difficult because these people need us, but also we need to take care of ourselves. So yeah. there's things that we can hopefully do to address that balance. So one of the things we can do is when they eat, we eat. When they sleep, we sleep. Mm. Recognising that we're just as important as they are. And accepting help and training other people to take over some of our roles. Mm. So if we're not there, 
we train someone who's willing and capable and we, we enable them to take off, off the role of us and we can do something else that we enjoy. Yes. So, so again, it's managing that and managing perhaps the guilt of, oh, you know, I'm not there all the time mm -hmm. and I'm leaving that person with someone else. Yes. But you can't be there all the time. You know, you need to, you need time for yourself. You need time to do things you enjoy. Yeah. Time to do things that are meaningful to you. So mm -hmm. while they're maybe doing other things, they're watching television or reading a book, we can do something we enjoy. We make something or comb our hair or do something that's, that helps us nourish ourselves, not completely forget ourselves and try and build that into our day. Yeah, that's a really powerful share because I know, for example, there'll be many caregivers, many caregivers listening to this show too. And to be able to take care of yourself as, you know, one of the, the, as a priority is absolutely key and also that guilt that can come from actually am I relinquishing my responsibility by not being there for that person but no no not in actual fact by nurturing yourself it's that analogies and to get like the oxygen mask you put your oxygen mask on first so that you can look after yourself and be able to save other people if necessary or help other people and you can do that even if you aren't in the same environment like you said whilst that person is maybe having their dinner or having their own downtime at quiet moment then use that pocket use that window of time not to be rushing around uh, maybe doing appointments you know everything that you might be doing that you have to do of course we appreciate that but at the same time how can I use that pocket of time to do something for me that's something joyful that's something caring for me so it's all about choice management within those times which is important I know many caregivers will need to hear that today yes. too yes and please that. um let's look after ourselves um let's make sure that um we avoid burnout this burnout can be slow it can be quick let's avoid burnout by nourishing ourselves by um having creative solutions talking with friends say you know i'm struggling you know li mm -hmm. friends listen to us and then hopefully by talking about it and thinking about solutions we can say oh I can see 10 minutes here where I can do something or I can see 10 minutes here where I can, you know, just close my eyes or I can, or, you know, while I'm preparing dinner for them, I do something for myself for tomorrow so that I don't have to rush around so much. So, you know, those creative solutions hopefully can help. It can help each other. 100%. So as I mentioned, I have a daughter, she's seven years old. And she has a diagnosed disability and we navigate life on that journey too. So I'm a care carer as well as a mama when it comes to doing the, the coordination of all of that. And when I'm doing things like cooking dinner for us, I sing and I play music okay. because, and you know, we have that vibe. So at the same time, I'm doing something that we have to do. We have to eat, we have to have dinner, but at the same time, taking care of me and my creativity and my joy by listening to music and God bless her. She is listening to my music as well. <laughs> you know, she loves a little bit of R and B. So yeah, she's listening to my music and you no, know, we create that vibe and that energy. So I'm still pouring into myself whilst doing something as caregiving and looking after her. So it's, it's habit stacking. I call it. Do Very something good. on top. Or something else it doesn't have to be Absolutely. isolated it's a habit you just stack it on top of something that you already do Excellent. and that's how I pour into myself too as a so thank you for that I really feel that we have covered so many aspects when it comes to rest when it comes to sleep and there's so many key points gems that you've dropped I'm going to go back take notes and I'm sure people if you haven't been taking notes listen back to this because there's so much that Yuande has dropped here that you <laughs> would benefit from taking on board and implementing into your worlds. So as part of this, we've spoken about self-love, self-care. This is also about you no know, dating and relationship, this show. So you've spoken about our relationships with ourselves, and I'm wondering as well, when you reflect upon some of your, your key relationships or experiences when it comes to romance for example because we're just going to pivot a little bit now what would you say are some of the key highlights some of the key lessons that you have learned from your romantic experiences too uh be yourself be yourself yeah because quite often sometimes you know in a romantic relationship you may want to think i fit in because of you know who they are but um i found that if i'm myself it's much, I'm much more, it's much, much better. 
more authentic rather than you know fitting into a shoe that doesn't fit yeah um so yeah just try to be my authentic self and be accepted for who I am um mm. you know that's and they, they sh you know there's, there's someone out there for everyone to to be themselves with and relax with I was watching a program the other day it was really good about autism um <laughs> and it was on BBC two it's really really good and there was this young lady and she said she masks a lot because she's an autistic mm -hmm. and she said 95 percent of the time she's masking to fit in mm -hmm. and the only time she could be herself was when she was at home with her husband and be who she really is and she found it even scary to show it to her mum. So in the end, she did this um, video and she showed what she was really like to her mum. And she felt accepted by her mum. So I was so I was so happy that she was able to find um, a, a man and her husband, a, a life partner, to be just herself with. You know, she because she was making weird movements, well, to us, but normal yeah. to her. Yeah. And it was just lovely to be able to see that. So if we can be encouraged to be ourselves and find someone to accept us for 100% who are, we are, so joyous. That is such a wonderful share, is to be yourself. And that can take, a, that's a process of self-discovery because we are evolving people. We for are. example, I know like who I am right now is completely different to who I was in the last year, two years ago, three years ago. We are evolving people. So showing up as our authentic self does take some self-reflection yeah, because we don't have to be who we were yesterday if yeah. it's going to stifle our growth. Exactly. We can move forward. So that is a really key learning. And I know many people will take that on. And thank you for that share about um, the lady with the you know, diagnosed you know, autism and how she was able to release that, release that to her mum. That must have been so powerful for her to be able to release that. So again, on the, the topic of love life and relationships as well, I do like to ask my guests what their personal definition of love is in a romantic front. So would you be open to sharing what your personal definition of love is? What does that mean to you? Well, uh, I suppose it has to be someone you feel that you can be, be with at different levels. Um, someone who you can grow with, you know, as you said, you know, you're an evolving person. Someone who accepts you're evolving as well you know uh, your different stages of life and um someone you could be intimate with um someone you can share respect you respect each other as well you love it you, so love is for me respect love is uh truth saying you're going to do something and doing it so if you say you're going to be somewhere at five o'clock you're there and if you can't do you know you either ring them or you you know you kind of there must be an explanation communication is really important as well Mm -hmm. um, which is you know you're communicating things that different uh to them so it, it feels as though it's as you said it's kind of more holistic rather than just intimacy because love is more for me love is more whole you're you're sharing your whole life with that whole person and and it's progressing um because you're growing together hopefully mm. that is such a powerful share and hopefully. i do Really, it, it is. I, really I have a lot of hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, hope is an acronym, you know, have only positive expectations. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, I have positive expectations. Positive I like expectations. That <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have positive expectations mm. because everybody's definition of love is going to be completely different. And some of those key features there can be consistent across relationships. The openness, the transparency, the integrity behind it the respect elements really key features when it comes to having healthy fulfilling quality and loving relationships too so I completely resonate with that and I know that many of the listeners are also going to resonate with your definition of love and think hey I I'm going to pinch that one myself <laughs> brilliant Randy I have really loved this conversation with you I'm going to go and have a nap afterwards <laughs> Good. It's a 20 minutes nap. I'm going to, to have a wake up because I think I don't want a full sleep cycle. I just want to nap right now. So, but there's so much for me to process. And that's fact, you know, this could be a really good time to have a nap because there's so much to digest. The brain could actually process all of that information. So just to make it clear, I'm not going to nap because it was boring. I'm going to. <laughs> 
good. Not being that because it's a time to just really process all of the wisdom and all of the experiences that you have shared. They're so beautiful. And I do have a part in tradition on my show whereby I ask my guests to leave our viewers, to leave our listeners with one key takeaway to help them along their journey of love, life and relationships. And it would be absolutely wonderful if you could share one of those. Um, because I find sleep really important and people talk about sleep, rest and relaxation, um, I want people to please put effort into resting because I think if we rest, we can show up at our best to our key relationships. So rest is really important. So putting that effort in, what doing what we can to rest, because we put effort into, you know, our work or our business or other things that we find important. Putting that kind of effort in to be able to rest and relax is really important, I think. That's beautiful because we can find that during the day, that rest time. Yes. We can find that even, even if sleep feels a bit challenging during a day, we can put that effort in and be intentional about getting that rest. So yeah. that's a fantastic takeaway. Thank you so much. Yurande, where can people find you? Where are you hanging out? Let us know where you are on social media and how they can contact you or follow you if they so wish to do so. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. I have my website, naturalfragrancecompany.co.uk. People can send me a message as well. Thank you. Brilliant. And I'm going to drop all of your Randy's links into the show notes too, so you'll be able to access that easily and effortlessly. Again, your Randy, thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. Sleep is vital. It's essential and should be, I use that word, should prioritise. Absolutely. So thank you for this wonderful conversation. And to everybody who has listened to this wonderful conversation, I want to thank you for your time, for your attention and for your energy. And until the next episode, take great care of yourself and others too.